This is a short review of Olympus's 25mm f1.8 standard lens. There's not a lot to describe, like Panasonic's 25mm f1.7, its only control is a nicely wide focusing ring. It's made of plastic with a metal mount. I hate saying something is made of plastic, it sounds cheap and flimsy, but having dropped a plastic body f2.8 zoom lens from waist height and watched it bounce across a tiled floor with no damage apart from a few scratches, I personally don't doubt its suitability. The Olympus is a handsome little beast with smooth manual focusing and a substantial feel. It's ideal as a walk around general purpose reportage lens, as here at Grisson Beach, when a sea mist came in suddenly, emptying the beach in an impromptu exodus. Its performance is well up to the high standards now expected of native micro four thirds lenses, as this portrait shows. Focusing is as fast as camera bodies from both Panasonic and Olympus will allow, which is to stay very fast, instantaneous in fact, under most light conditions. Optically, it has no bad habits, purple fringing and flare are not a problem, and it is very sharp, as you'd expect from a standard lens. It lacks stabilisation, but even if you have a camera body without it, with such a fast lens, it is rarely a problem. It's easily handheld at a 25th of a second, being a shortish focus lens and as I personally tend to use primes at f2 as standard, I'm usually working with a high shutter speed anyway. In terms of sharpness, there is no reason not to use it wide open, but even the roughly one-third stop down to f2 will notch up the performance across the frame. This applies to almost any fast prime, and is why I use f2. With something like an f1.2 lens, a drop to f1.4 will do much the same. So, a handy and compact lens, great for indoor portraits, street, and since it focuses down to 25 centimeters, less than 12 inches, general purpose work. There is only one thing against it, and that is the existence of the Panasonic 25 mm f1.7. The Panasonic is a tiny bit faster, and if you really look, has better edge to edge performance, up to around 5.6, with the Olympus a bit sharper in the center. Looked at overall, I'd say the Panasonic, with its better corner sharpness at wide apertures, has a real world performance edge, but in reality, both lenses are exemplary, and I wouldn't find optical performance itself a reason to favour one or the other. Some photographers with Olympus camera bodies might prefer a matching lens, of course. However, there is one big difference between these lenses in the UK and the Eurozone, and that's the price. With the Panasonic selling for £160 sterling, as opposed to £279 for the Olympus, similar in Euros. Unaccountably, in the USA, it is only $50 dearer. Standard prime lenses in any format are traditionally expected to be usefully fast with good optical performance and an affordable price, a kind of showcase for what the manufacturer can do. The Olympus 25mm is expensive not only by comparison with its Panasonic equivalent, but its stablemate 45mm f1.8 too, a lens type usually dearer than a standard. But even with only a $50 difference in the USA, I still see no reason to pay the extra over the Panasonic. There's the Panasonic Summerlux 25mm f1.4 of course, but given its price you'd need to make extensive use of its extra speed to justify the premium. So it's in a different class really. All in all a very nice lens, but given Panasonic's competition, unattractively priced. Thanks for watching.